Thank you. Please be seated. Let us worship the Lord together. call to worship this morning is led by Tom Oswald. There are different spiritual gifts of the same spirit, and there are different ministries and the same Lord. Christ is just like the human body. A body is a unit and all the parts of the body are one body, even though there are many parts. We were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jew or Greek or slave or free. All given one spirit to drink. Come Holy Spirit, let us worship God.
Thank you. You may be seated. And one, another one of Mary Thomas's relatives will come and give our prayer of confession and words of assurance. Mr. Roland Austin will come now, and I remind you, all of this, our prayer of confession and words of assurance, are in unison. upon us. God has called us to bring good news and liberation to the poor, to the marginalized, and to all who are in need anywhere. God's joy is our strength. Through God we can do all things. God's spirit surrounds us with forgiveness and love. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You may be seated. And at this time, I'm going to call the Oswald family to the front, as well as the Gamble family and Ms. Janet Phillips. Friends, I invite you to turn to page 33 in your hymnal. Today we are performing a holy baptism as well as receiving into the United Methodist Church and receiving into this local congregation today. But all of this is for us as God's people. And I begin on page 33. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into God's, into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. And at this time, I'm going to invite Josh Castleberry, our lay leader, to present our candidates. Janet Phillips, 
from Westside Baptist Church. Thank you very much. And now I uh, will be addressing the parents as well as those who are transferring today. And I ask you these questions. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If you will, please say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I see that, sweet pea. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church in which Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races? You do this. And I now I speak to the congregation on the top of page 35. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? Now let us join together in professing the Christian faith is contained in the scriptures of the Old and the New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the We continue with the thanksgiving over the water on page 36. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the, brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb, he was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and she who receives it to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All 
Now, I have a question to ask Mary Madison and William and their parents. Were they baptized at Shandon? What was that? What was that day like? What was the day like? Do you remember what they the day the day they were baptized? They were little, just like that. <laughs> they were little. You wouldn't uh, remember. You wouldn't remember. No, I don't think you would. Now, where were you baptized? Do you remember where you, the two of you were baptized, Matt? <laughs> a long time ago. It's a long time ago. You were probably this age too, weren't yeah. you? Yeah. How about you, Megan? Yeah. You, were, you were a baby too? Yes, yes. Now, Janet, tell me, do you, you come from another tradition. You come from the Baptist church. Can you tell us about your baptism? I was baptized in Midwest City, Oklahoma. You sound like you're from Oklahoma. <laughs> How did you, now you, you're from, where are you from originally? From England. You're from England and you were in Oklahoma. What, what did you do to have to deserve that? My husband was in the service. Ah, very good. Well, we are glad to have you with us today. All of you, and we'll talk a little bit more in a minute. Now, tell me about your baptism. Do you remember when you were baptized? I don't remember, I was very little. You were very little too, that's right. And Thomas, you were as well, weren't you? I remember you? I was at Clemson United Methodist. You were at Clemson United Methodist, is that right? All right. Now, I know, I remember the day you were baptized. It was a special day. It was a very special day. Your mom and dad were right here, and there was no Mary Thomas here either. But you are going to be a good big sister, aren't you? That's right, that's right. All right, so let's take a moment. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Got a big hand in her mouth. You see that? All right. You got a pretty bracelet on too, don't you? Would you hold that for me? Thank you. All right. What name? shall be given to this child. Mary Thomas. You see that water, sweet pea? You see that water? Don't touch the water. All right. Mary Thomas, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, bless this child as she grows in years. May she also grow in your love and in the love of her family and church. Amen. All right. My friends, I want to introduce to you. You want to walk with me, Lenore? I want to introduce to you Mary Thomas. Now, as family, you have a big responsibility to care for both of these children and love them and care for them and relieve Molly and Thomas at the appropriate, look at that, yeah. Now, Lenore, you know I walked you around just like this one time. And what I do, you know what I'm doing when I do this, Lenore? I'm letting people see not just a beautiful baby, because you know what? We don't have any ugly babies at Trinity United Methodist Church. We don't. But what I want them to see, Lenore, is to see that this child is now their responsibility. They have a responsibility to set examples for her. They have a responsibility to love her. I can't see your face under this hat, darling. I guess you're still looking around. Look at there. Look at there. 
All right. They have a responsibility to you. And one day, you're going to grow up and be just like Lenore. <laughs> and you are going to be, take care of other children just like they are taking care of you. Look at there, there's Mr. Steve. Yeah. All kinds of pretty people. And see, there's Miss Denise. She put the water in the font today, which was of just the right temperature, so you didn't squeal. You have a wonderful church to be a part of, Mary Thomas. And we are thankful for all of them because it is the fellowship that makes all the difference in the world. We could talk a lot about how the church ought to be and its polity and politics, but Mary Thomas, when you come right down to it, it's these people that make the difference. All right, Lenore, you can come with me. Let's go back down the front, huh? You're having a good day, aren't you, Lenore? <laughs> All right, there you go. Thank you. I'm going to ask Josh if he will come forward now as we pray a prayer for Lenore. Excuse me, for Mary Thomas. Will you lay hands on Mary Thomas, please? Mary Thomas, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And the people say, Amen. Amen. Now it is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. And the congregation responds on the middle of page 37. Through baptism, you are incorporated in Now, friends, I invite you this morning to remember your baptism. You heard several adults here today. They can't remember what day it was. They may remember the place. But here's the thing. I invite you to remember your baptism, what it means. I invite you to remember that you are loved by God even before you knew it or understood it. And so I remind you, you are beloved by God. Remember your baptism and be thankful. And now I'm going to, if you will turn to the top of page 38, I'm going to address first Janet. Janet, as a member of Christ's Holy Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? Very good. Thank you. And now I receive you all, the Gambles and Ms. Phillips, into this congregation. As members of this congregation at Trinity United Methodist Church, will you, be, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Will you do that? Very good. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your, to your love and to your care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, to confirm their hope, and to perfect them in love. And the congregation responds, we give thanks.
Now may the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and in peace. And at this time, my friends, I invite you to show your affirmation and welcome to those that have been baptized and who have been received into membership today. William, thank you for being here. William Madison, thank you for being here. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. At this time, I invite our children to come forward for our children's time. strong. What do they eat? They eat weeds. They eat mud. They eat mud. Okay. That's a new one for me. They eat leaves maybe and flowers. What happens to a caterpillar when it gets very full and he stops and he takes a rest? What does he turn into? He turns into a cocoon. Mr. Josh, how long are they in cocoons? Because I don't remember. I didn't do my research. Depends on the species. How many days? Seven to ten days. That's short. So it depends on the species. Okay. So they're going to take a little rest. We don't know how long that rest might be. So when they wake up, what happens? What do they turn into? My favorite. They turn into a butterfly. That's God's amazing creature. Do you know what kind of butterfly that is? A painted lady. Somebody knows they're a lady. No, it's not a painted lady. It might be a monarch, but you're very smart. I just want you to know. Big, little, small, little, God's image of you is beautiful, and all of his creatures are beautiful. And I want you to always remember that you are beautiful on the inside and the out, and that God made you in his image. So let us pray real quick. Dear God, thank you for making me beautiful. In your name I pray. Amen. Let's go to Children's Church.
This morning as we hear the testimonies of those who went to Guatemala earlier this year in March, there is a wonderful scripture that I have been pondering as I think about their mission. And it comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll be reading the first 11 verses. And then I'm going to invite uh, our those who will be speaking about their trip. We're going to be uh, speaking from the lectern on that side. So uh, those of you that are speaking can make your way down here following the scripture lesson. Brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be ignorant about spiritual gifts. You know that when you were Gentiles, you were often misled by faults of gods that can't even speak. So I want to make it clear to you that no one says Jesus is cursed when speaking by God's Spirit, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different ministries and the same Lord. And there are different activities by the same, but the same Lord who produces all of them in everyone. A demonstration of the Spirit is given to each person for the common good. A word of wisdom, wisdom is given by the Spirit to one person. A word of knowledge to another according to the same Spirit. Faith is to still another by the same Spirit. Gifts of healing to another in the one spirit, performance of miracles to another, prophecy to another, the ability to tell spirits apart to, to one another, different kinds of tongues to another, and the interpretation of the tongues to yet another. All of these things are produced by the one and the same spirit who gives what he wants to each person. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of this, the holy work of our Lord. At this time, I'm going to ask Richard Merle, and who is our team leader, uh, to come and bring with him those who will be speaking today. not my favorite thing to do, but I want to <laughs> thank the people of Trinity and the, our Trinity friends that aren't members. Without their generosity, we would, this trip would not be possible. Um, 19 people this year. I guess we have about half of them here. And no, we did not send out a memo to wear white pants. <laughs> if we did, Annalyn didn't get it. <laughs> But anyway, without y'all's generosity, we would nev never made this trip. Um, this is a picture of a slip lamp that we purchased back in November, and it arrived down there right before we got there, so we were able to see it. Um, that's what you put your head up to and look at, and they fit you for glasses. But um, that's the group and the clinic. Um, that Reverend Luke Rudd. So we're gonna, I'm going to let some people that have something that really have to say go with Meg and Huey first. I didn't know I was moving in the first position, but um, anyway, I, first of all, I also want to say thank you so much for the opportunity that you gave us um, to go and be the hands and feet to serve these people of Guatemala that we have all grown to love so much. Um, and most of you have heard Dr. Luke and met Dr. Luke, and he's just such a blessing to our church. So thank you for that. But um, what I want to talk about just real quick is the fact that this year we did something new. We were able to take apart 
take part in a new project that was begun in, in 2019 called the Rosani Lens Project. And um, Jen and Gray and Nicole and I were able to go a few days before we left to go to Guatemala and we were trained in Charleston to fit, to be able to fit the people of Guatemala with prescription glasses, which was such a new thing to us and it was so exciting. Um, and there are two guys from Greenville, they grew up in Greenville, one became an ophthalmologist and lives in Florida now, and the other works with campus outreach at MUSC. And so they trained us and we got a big suitcase full of um, lenses. We had 150 lenses for each side of the eye, on I mean each eye, and 50 glass frames. And so we were able to give 50 pairs of prescription glasses. So in some of these pictures you'll be able to see. Um, and if you want to go and find out more about it, it's the Rosani Lens Project. But just by the grace of God, we were able to find out about it and jump on board and be a part of that new project. So that was one, um, one of the most fun things that we've done. So thank you for all you've done. And Lynn? So um, a question that I got asked by Dr. Luke on this trip, he asked me a few times. He said, what are you trying to get out of this? Um, and I kept responding with, to help people, because, I mean, that's what you go on a mission trip for, is to help people. And he said, no, what are you trying to get out of this? I suppose he was thinking that I uh, was helping other people get something out of it. And in a way, he was right. But my response hasn't really changed all that much. I did go on this mission trip to be able to help other people because it helps me feel closer to Christ. Um, and this trip was really amazing when it came to that. Um, I think it was the last night, the night after the last time we went to a clinic, we all got in a circle and put our hands on Dr. Luke and we're praying and um, feeling that, ministry, feeling the ministry and feeling everyone there um, to help serve Christ and help these people um, really moved me. and almost brought me to tears, um, which doesn't happen very often. Um, but it was a really great experience being able to go on a plane for the first time, being able to see a new country where you don't, you don't get to see how other people live in other places very often. And it was a great experience because people, even if they weren't pregnant or didn't need an ultrasound, being able to just see what was inside of them, being able to, um, know that someone was there to try and help you, getting a pair of glasses, even if you couldn't see perfectly with them on, um, was really moving for them. And it really, it really showed me the love of Christ, um, which is like every mission trip. But this was just absolutely amazing. And I cannot wait to go again next year. Um, this is my first time. And it was just a very memorable thing, um, meeting all the youth, I mean, all the kids there. Um, some of them stuck by my hip almost the whole time I was at the clinics, and it was just the sweetest thing. They just colored with me for, for how long were we there each day? Four, five, six hours? Yeah, almost the whole entire time, and it was just absolutely amazing. Um, but, yeah. Good morning. Um, I was blessed with the opportunity due to you um, this year to be the newbie, one of the newbies on the team. But um, I presented this question to the group one morning and bear with me. But um, if I gave you a magic crayon and I said, draw a picture of anything that you want in your life or want your life to look like, what would that look like? But then God had that magic crayon and he drew a picture of what he wanted your life to look like. And think about that while we speak. But um, I was blessed. Um, we left out and we were on the van ride after the plane. Um, that was the four hour van ride through the crazy mountains that nobody tells you about prior to. <laughs> um, but. Um, Mitch Gretzky looked at me and he said, Ashley, why did you come on this trip? And I said, the same thing that I had been saying up until um, that moment or until we completed the trip. And I said, because every day I teach preschool in a place where I know I am needed and that's my mission field. 
but I've always wanted to go abroad. And he said, all right, that's cool, you know. And then so we go in and we um, start counting meds and we start um, getting everything together for the first clinic. And I thought, well, this is pretty cool, you know. And then um, the first day, Monday morning, we drive up to the first clinic and all the or a lot of the um, people of that village were sitting outside and just patiently waiting. And um, I was alluded that many of them may have walked hours to get there um, because they had no car or whatever would be the reason, but they just really wanted to see us. And after talking to one of the very first patients, Santos, and she received glasses for the first time and she smiled bigger than um, anyone I've ever seen smile. And she explained to me how she was gonna be able to see the rug in her house and how she was gonna be able to see the roads as she walked the hours home. I knew that was the reason why I was there. And so um, throughout the trip, we experienced many patients or many people exactly like that. They would come and they would, their um, glucose monitor would read high and so, and they would smile all the while. And no matter what you gave to them, no matter what you did for them, they would continuously smile, hug you, and be ever so gracious. And so um, after um, we were finished and um, we were wrapping up everything, and I reflected on the different people that we had met and how gracious they were even when they walked hours, or even when they only got a vitamin, a multivitamin, how gracious they were. I knew those were the reasons, or those were my whys. Um, but um, I went to hug one of the translators goodbye, and um, which were amazing, by the way. And um, she said to me, I want your joy. I want your happiness all the time. And Believe me, that is not all the time because just ask my family. But um, it was um, the, that moment that I realized that that was God's light shining through us and shining through everyone because at every moment, everyone was joyful. Everyone was happy because we were sharing God's love and the light was shining through us. So reflecting back to the picture with the magic crayon, I can tell you that my picture was far from what God's picture was that he painted for me. But um, I am ever so thankful and that I trusted and that um, I know that in that picture, his, somewhere in that picture for me, he had a light and for all of us and um, to go and be the light and shine for him. Thank you. I'm not sure I would like speaking. Good morning, everybody. My name is Erica Boland. I've had the wonderful opportunity to serve um, in Guatemala for the third year. Um, I could not be more thankful um, for all the love and generosity that Trinity United Methodist Church has provided as a church body to make this trip possible not only to send this team of 19 uh, members over to Guatemala to help with our everyday gifts and talent, talents that the Lord has provided us with, but also, more importantly, to share the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. We were able to see a little over, well, a little less than 200 patients a day. We were able to help them in ways and measures that just go beyond uh, the scope of medicine. Um, and so I just, I could not be more thankful for that opportunity. And every year I always learn something more important to me um, during my faith walk with the Lord is being able to just step outside of what I know from my everyday life to be able to go and help serve in a country that I know absolutely nothing about, um, but the Lord has provided in so many ways. And I just come to you this morning with just a heart full of gratitude and thankfulness for each and every one of you. Thank you. 
I'm going to say a little bit, bit of something about Al Nelson here. He wore me out down there. <laughs> my name is Al Nelson. Me and my wife were able to go. Um, we're members of Bethesda Church of God, but we are very appreciative of everyone here that allowed us to come take part in this trip. Um, Jen's a nurse, so she went over for that part of it. I'm a construction worker contractor here in town. Um, so we, the four of us, me, Mr. Richard, Mr. Harry, and Clay, we didn't get to really see what they got to see other than one day. But what we did, we stayed at Bethesda, that is the clinic that we all stayed at, um, that Dr. Luke runs. And for the three days that we stayed there and worked, um, we built walls and made eight separate rooms that, um, that they're trying to make so they can have patients come and stay at the hospital. So the days that we were there, uh, me and Mr. Richard were the framing crew and the sheetrock crew. And I, I will say this, I'm, I'm used to doing work here and uh, we normally work from eight to two. Mr. Richard wasn't having that. Uh, he worked with me. And uh, he made sure that the ladies downstairs kept coffee coming. I don't know what they had in that coffee, but it felt like we worked about 72 hours a day. Um, but we, and, and following behind other work, it was very interesting, but uh, it, it was a very humbling experience for me. Um, but we did, on our last day, we were able to uh, leave the clinic and go out with the rest of the crew and go see what they did. And, and just seeing the love that they were showing towards the Guatemalan people and just, you know, when we would pull up, they, the Guatemalan people would look at us like we were celebrities. I mean, they were wanting them to hold our, our whole babies and, and I'm, you know, that's different for me, but uh, it, it, it was very nice just to see this, this group do the things that they did, helping the people. Um, and then part two of this, um, since I have been home, Dr. Luke has reached out to us, um, to me and my wife, and asked if we would be interested in, in helping with another program over there. Uh, um, the first day that the group went out and did clinicals, they had a couple that, um, from the Church of Bethel that, that helped at the clinic. Um, and this couple, the, the lady is a weaver. She makes $9 a week as a weaver. Her husband is a field hand that makes $7 a day as a field hand. But their preacher was telling us how they devoted their time and, and left work to be able to come help us. Um, well, these people live in a 10 by 10 shack that is a dirt floor. The ceiling of it is the tin ceiling with um, holes all in it. I mean, I don't, we don't have the pictures up there, but it's sad to see they have one bed in this little shack and they have a curt or a sheet over the top of the bed to catch the water that comes through the roof so the bed stays dry. Um, but anyway, the Church of Bethel um, there, they, they put together the workers and Dr. Luke came to us and me and a couple other members from the, the group here and then a couple of businesses from town got together and raised the money to be able to build these people a 16 by 24 concrete building um, home for, for them to stay in now. So, you know, just even when we were there coming back, we were still able to help. Um, so I greatly appreciate everything that y'all did, being able to send us over there. Y'all, uh, I, I went to help Guatemala, but at the end of the day, Guatemala really helped me. So um, thank y'all for allowing us to go. Ladies and gentlemen, they went, they went to be disciples, to make disciples for Jesus Christ. They saw, they healed, they loved. And I think it would be perfectly appropriate now for you to show your affirmation of our 2023 Healing Guatemala team. Come on out. Come on. Friends, I invite you now to stand and join with me in, the in our affirmation of faith. It's found on page 881 of your hymnal.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we affirm as we hear the stories this day, we affirm who we are as Trinity United Methodist Church as we respond to these three questions that I ask. What is Trinity's mission? What is Trinity's vision? Why are we about the work to fulfill our mission and our vision? Thank you. You may be seated. This week, one of our own, Earl and Sherry Coulter, two of our own, had a sudden and tragic loss. Their son, Travis, died suddenly Monday, uh, 46 years old. And I am thankful for your prayers and all that you have done this week to minister to Earl and Sherry. I want to thank you for that. You have made them feel uh, like children of God, even in spite of everything that's going on in their lives. Travis's funeral today is at 2 o'clock uh, there at the funeral home right across the street from the Y. My friends, there are other concerns within our world. We are thankful, so thankful for the Healing Guatemala ministry. We're thankful for all that Luke Reed does, Dr. Luke Reed does in Guatemala with this ministry. And at this time, my friends, let's have a few quiet moments as we prepare for our morning prayer. for the ministry opportunities that our mission team had in Guatemala to bring sight to those that could not see. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the changes that happened within our own team. Some went down there unsure about why they were there. And some, O oh God, will be moved and shaped for months and years to come with a call upon their lives. Dear Lord, we pray that your comforting presence will be with Earl and Sherry and their family, not only today as the funeral comes, but also in the coming weeks and months. Lord, it's hard to lose a child. It's hard to lose a brother or sister. It's hard to lose a dad, a husband, under such circumstances. Be with the Coulter family, O oh God. Hear our prayers this day for Mary Thomas as she begins a life claimed by you as she has been claimed before she was born. 
Thank you for all who have chosen to be a part of this place, Lord, this fellowship, this place of ministry. Thank you for the people of Trinity that have made it possible for things like healing Guatemala to happen. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you will bless us as we seek to do your will. These things we ask in your name. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite my friend and colleague, Steve McCormick, forward for, what did I tell you you had, Steve? Oh, I think I told you two minutes, right? You said you'd give me two, but I'm going to take four. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. You know, these preachers, <clears throat> I have a hard time. Quick commercial. Uh, please. You know, preachers are always begging you for something, right? I'm begging you for your prayers. I'm involved in the Commonwealth Prison Ministry. Have been since 1991. Did this commercial in the adult Sunday school classes today, but some of you weren't in Sunday school. Though I don't know why. Shame on you. Well, that's another, that's another sermon. That's another sermon. Okay. Um, yeah, I need to support in three different ways. Uh, prayer. This is a prayer driven ministry. Um, two, I need your financial support. Uh, we have in the past had team members to prepare food that we bring into the prison. We can't do that now because post COVID things have changed. We have to purchase the food from like a restaurant or uh, pre prepared by someone else. More expensive. Uh, we do six meals for the team and the residents that we're serving. Uh, so that gets to be expensive. Checks can be made out in the of South Carolina. All this information is in the book. Uh, the third thing that we need are cookies. Now, I like chips of boy, <laughs> I like nut butter, and who doesn't like more but it can be any kind of cookie, but it has to be store ball. It has to come to us in an unopened package. Uh, if you'll bring cookies with you to church next week, invest in you will be a box where we will collect them, and then I'll transport them into the prison. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the team goes in to share the love of God uh, with, with a certain number of residents. We had over 40 people to apply for the 16 positions that were available at this time. The guys in prison are hungry, spiritually hungry. Uh, and Kairos is one ministry that provides what they do. Thank you in advance for your support. Thank you, Steve. Steve has been doing that ministry for 30, over 30 years in the, in the prisons of South Carolina, making a difference with those who are in need. And my friends, you will find out more about that in the bulletin, as Steve has said. At this time, I invite our uh, ushers to come forward for our tithes and offerings.
Let us pray. Gracious God, bless these gifts that they may be used all over the world in places like Guatemala, in places here in Sumter. Bless our giftedness, O Lord, our talents that make a difference in building, in doctoring, in caring, in all the things that we do. May it all be done to your glory and honor, O Lord. We pray now as your son taught when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Be seated. On these opportunities that present themselves to live our faith. You heard today about uh, healing Guatemala. My friends, it's not too early to begin to tell Richard that you're wanting to do that next year. So if you are interested in, in helping out in that way, please do so. You heard about the Kairos Prison Ministry. Please see, see Steve McCormick for more information about that. Our Ladies' Night Supper, they have ordered more food in case you have not uh, made a reservation. Ladies, if you want to come and be a part of it, please come on at 5.30. And we have our women's Bible study on Tuesday night. Uh, and our Ironman Bible study is Tuesday morning at 6.30 over in the williams Bryce Center. However you can make God's love known in the world this week, it might be through some organized way. But it might just be in telling a, co a co-worker a friend at school. It may be in just telling them that God loves them in the moment of that life. My friends, I invite you now to stand with me. Our final hymn, Forward Through the Ages, number 555.
It has been a full day. A day we went a little long, but it was a blessed day in which we received wonderful testimony about the work of Christ in the world through this church. And we received and baptized. What a wonderful day. Go now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and make a difference wherever you live, work, and play. Amen.